So in this video, I want to tell you how you turn the screen into a web sign. So you're thinking, what is a web sign? Well, a web sign is quite simple. It's just an informational display on a big screen, typically, so people can see it while they're walking by it. And all it's showing is a web page. There is no special software here, really. It's just running a browser. There's no sort of lock-in. There's no special software to get this stuff up on the screen. All it is is loading a URL with your information on it and putting it on the big screen. It's really, really simple. You could probably cook up your own sort of solution doing this with Windows, but it'd probably be um, susceptible to viruses and malware and difficult to keep up to date and have all sorts of other little issues. The great thing about Web Converger, it is fire and forget. You set this up once, and I'm going to show you how you set up, and then you, it's A for away. Your, uh, your web sign is there. It will always stay up to date with the latest web technologies, stay up to date against the latest uh, security threats, such and so forth. So how do I configure a web sign? Well, usually it involves an external display, and that's where it gets a little bit tricky, and I'm going to tell you how to set up that external display. Anyway, let me work backwards and show you how I did it. Right, for, for this setup, we're going to need a couple of things. An external monitor, which I have it connected via the HDMI cable here. We need Web Converger. There's um, a guide on the Web Converger website to show you how you put the latest web converger image on a USB key and you need a PC. Um, I'm using a laptop here, you know, typically you might have like a, an Intel Nook on the, on the back of the screen or hidden away, um, but the great thing about using a laptop is everything's here and uh, I can probably show you how you might encounter some difficulties with the display. So let's boot up Web Converger, just so you have an idea of what Web Converger looks like by default. Now you need to often press something to make it boot to the USB. On my ThinkPad it's F12, it could be F2, it could be F1, and all I'm doing here is choosing the external uh, USB to boot from. The great thing about this approach is that you might have an existing operating system, you just want to try out Web Converger, you will be trying out Web Converger booting from this USB and it will not touch your, your, your existing data, it's perfect for just trying out and maybe you know just, just making this a temporary web sign. But ideally, when, once you've deployed Web Converger, you install it by using this option. But anyway, let's go for the defaults. Just going with the defaults here, okay? And it's loaded the default configuration page. And this page helps you sort of configure Web Converger with a control panel. And the important thing I wanted to point out is that um, Web Converger tries its best to auto detect displays, but I don't know if you've attached an external screen, um, especially on a Mac, it can be quite a strange experience. But what's happened here is that there's bars and this is in a low res. So what are we going to try to do here? We're going to try to uh, figure out the properties of the, our display so we can set it up. Um, and what we all need to do is head into debug mode. Sounds a little scary, uh, but it isn't that much. It isn't really. And once we know what our displays are called by, that by our system, we can say, turn this off, just focus on the screen, and use all the pixels of the screen to show the display. Really simple. So let's just go through that now. Booting up the machine. Da, da, da. Pressing F12 so I can choose to boot from the USB.
All right. Choosing the SanDisk Extreme. Okay, now I'm gonna go into debug mode. You press tab, just that's the tab key here. Space, I don't know if you can see this line here, but all I'm doing is appending the word debug. And that will allow me to sort of get it, get at the console in order to do some checks. When it's in debug mode, it usually shows some more stuff on the screen. Wouldn't worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna launch a terminal. You can see the terminal here. It's kind of like the old DOS of old. So all I'm doing is running XRanderer. It's a program to tell me about the display. And I can see here, LVDS1 is this screen and HDMI1 is this screen. Um, it's also got the different resolutions and such and so forth. So we need an XRanderer X command to, to turn off LVDS1 and set it to HDMI1. And I, I pretty much know that command. It is XRanderer uh, output name of this one uh, off and then output this one uh, auto and that should work this goes off that goes on the window isn't um, isn't uh, correctly resized but that doesn't matter I, it, I just checked that work and it does so now all I need to do is put that into my configuration to set up the uh, the screen, this external screen, so we can sort of pack this laptop away and when we boot it up, the screen will be nicely set up for showing this the, the web page. Okay, next step is to put that line in the configuration. So let's go and create a configuration. Booting web converger. Choose an external disk, the USB key with web converter in it. I am going with the defaults here. Okay, so setting up a configuration, simple. Putting in my uh, my email address. I'm pre putting this little extra thing just to keep it unique. My email address is hendry at webconverger.com. Feel free to email me. Uh, okay, Changi Airport arrivals. Da, 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 da. Passenger arrivals. Is this the right one? I'm just. Um, this is not the, the best um, example I've ever seen. Um, you, you know, it'd be great if this was missing um, and the font was a little bit bigger. Okay, uh, disable screen, blank out, and create configuration. So now I just need to confirm that on my mobile or another computer. I'm just going to go onto a computer beside me to confirm my email address. Okay, I have confirmed it. So the next step is to, um, I usually press F10, that quickly exits it. And then this is my machine identity, machine UUID and the MAC address. So now I'm just gonna add that to my special email address for this demo. And it's added. Right. Perfect. Okay. 
Now I need to put the xrando command in here. Uh, we can do a couple other things. We can change it so it's a full screen neon. So that removes this chrome by putting chrome equals neon. Uh, the default web converger thing has a URL bar and obviously that's not really of interest to your, to your to the members of the public looking at a sign. Next thing to do is put the x render line in. So the x render line needs to be encoded. Um, I'll explain somewhere else how it, that's done, but it's pretty simple. The spaces become percent %20. It's basically URI um, encoded. So let me see. LVDS1 percent 20 space that becomes an off and then we need another percent 20 and then we go output uh, percent 20 in a space HDMI 1 uh, percent 20 dash dash auto yeah that's right let me double check and as as a bonus I'm going to put another extra under line and this line is going to make the screen rotate uh, to the left. Great. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, this customer line just shows you is just the email uh, contact. Not really important, but the important thing is the home page, the information you want to show to the public. Chrome equals neon. Take away this this uh, user interface. No blank means that the screen will not power save. It will just keep on outputting the uh, information. The X Xranda says for this particular laptop where, where we have the setup, we have two screens. Turn this screen off, turn this one on, focus on this one. And then the last line is rotate that screen to the left. So we have a portrait view. Okay, so let's submit that. Need to type in my password. Uh, it's on my email or oh, on my web page here. Da, da, da. Randomly generated. Right, new configuration. Now I'm going to reboot the machine for the configuration to take effect. Okay, hopefully for the last time. In this demo. Choosing the boot on the USB. F12 on my computer, entering boot menu. Choosing this thing. Um, just leave it at the defaults. It's going to boot up, connect to the internet, download its configuration. The configuration is what we, we went through just then and apply that configuration. So there we have a little icon saying it's looking for the internet. That means it's configuring and boom. Here we go. A web sign.